Do I currently possess the funds to be purchasing more books? No. Did I purchase them anyways? Yes, I did. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel, Maddie Reads. And today I'm just going to be doing a cheeky little book haul. So this is just like a random assortment of books I got from different places. Um, I bought some new books while I was on vacation because I love a little airport bookstore moment. Um, there's something about buying a book in an airport. It just speaks to me. Um, and then some of it was just like random purchases I recently made. So yeah. Let's get into it. First book I actually had talked about in the books that I was reading on vacation and I did finish it. So I'm gonna talk about it in my August reads. Um, but that is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. <sighs> I love this book. I gave it five stars and I don't normally give books five stars. Like it has to be, like it has to really move me to give it five stars. Um, and I totally, totally agree. I talked about in the vacation reads, the, re the reason this book hooked me is because it said, this is a love story, but not like one you've ever read before. And I completely stand by that. Um, such a good book. It follows the story of two game developers, um, Sam Masser and Sadie Green, who meet as children in this like really unique circumstance. So basically Sam um, got into a car accident and has this really, really messed up foot. Like all of the bones in his foot are shattered. So he's at this children's hospital and Sadie's sister is going through chemotherapy. And so they meet in the gaming room of the children's hospital and become friends um, because they end up playing video games together. You know, they talk about the Oregon Trail and Super Mario and all those fun games. Um, and then they have a falling out because it turns out Sadie was double timing Sam and using their time hanging out to get community service hours for her bar mitzvah. Um, but then serendipitously, they meet years later as adults and Sadie is working in game development and Sam proposes her that they make a game together and then it follows their journey um, from you know being childhood friends to grown adults with adult relationships right? and game development which is something I knew nothing about but it was so fun reading about so super fun at the same time I bought a lady's guide to fortune hunting by Sophie Irwin I just picked this up I think it was on like the Amazon new releases um, but the main reason I picked this up was because I saw Sophie Kinsella said it was a good book and I love Sophie Kinsella books so I figured I'd pick it up um, and I actually already finished this one as well. Um, I just read it really quick so I'll be giving it a review in my August reads but it basically goes through the story of Kitty who um, whose mother and father recently died and it's very much Bridgerton Regency era type of book so if you love that setting in that place this will be for you um, and she has a marriage set up which will help relieve all of the debts from her father and mother's passing and everything they've left for them. But he goes back on the marriage offer like days after her father passes. And so she has to all of a sudden scrounge around to find a man with enough of a fortune to keep her and her sisters afloat. So it was so interesting. It was just like a witty, fun, light read. It did have a little bit of a really quick ending. Like I wish the ending was a little bit more fleshed out, but I think that's just the nature of like period dramas. Um, but yeah, a really fun, light read. If you liked Bridgerton, if you love like, you know, Pride and Prejudice, like that type of era of writing and place and setting, I think you'll really like this one. It was such a fun, light summer book. And the cover's so gorgeous. I mean, that's the re that's half the reason I bought it was just because of this cover. Like, she's giving. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Four stars. Which I will be, I feel like I'm like already giving mini reviews of these books, but I promise I'm going to talk about them more in depth in my actual August review. And the rest of these books I haven't finished, so those were the only two. Okay, this next one I picked up super random. It was on an Amazon best list or some, I don't know what list it was, but it was on an Amazon best book list. And it's NSFW by Isabel Kaplan, which is such an eye-catching book cover and like color. So this book follows an unnamed protagonist who works for a entry-level position at a TV network. It's supposed to be a book about, you know, feminism in the workplace and that, but I'll just read the little entry blurb. So at first, the high adrenaline work environment motivates her, yet as she climbs the ranks, she confronts the reality of creating change from the inside. Her points get attention only when echoed by male colleagues. She hears whispers of abuse and sexual misconduct. Her mother says to keep her head down until she's the one in charge. A scenario that seems idealistic at best, but morally questionable at worst. When her personal and professional lives collide, threatening both the network and her future, she must decide what to protect, the career she's given everything for or the empowered woman she claims to be. 
fusing page-turning prose with dark humor and riveting commentary on the truths of starting out professionally, Isabel Kaplan's NSFW is an unflinching exploration of the gray area between empowerment and complicity. The result is a stunning portrait of what success of what success costs in today's patriarchal world, asking us, is it ever worth it? I just thought that sounded so interesting. Um, I have read other sort of like feminist literature books. I do enjoy them. And I just thought this was such an interesting, you know, I love dark humor. It's not super long. And it seemed like um, it poses a question that I think a lot of females face in the workplace today. Like, do you say something? Is it when you know it's going to hurt your career or do you just let it go by? And does that make you morally complicit in what's going on? So I thought it was such an interesting book and it was on an Amazon bestseller list. So I'll definitely, I'm excited to read this. I'm going to read this this month and give it a review. So yeah, let me know if you've read this one. I'm super excited about it. Okay, the next two books I bought are the second and third book in the Poppy Wars series, um, and that is Dragon Republic and Burning God. And man, these are thick books. <laughs> I am going to read these at some point, but I'm not like rushing to get into them. Um, but basically, the Poppy War follows the story of a child bride who, in order to escape her fate, studies for an exam to get into Synagard, which is a military academy. And it follows her journey through this academy. And then once she graduates the ac academy, um, her time in the war and how I guess easy it is in the time of war to lose your moral compass and to sort of devolve into what others may consider to be a villain. Um, I think it talks a lot about otherness, how you think about the enemy as an other, even though they're humans just like you. It's supposed to closely mirror um, like Mao Zedong's upbringing and things of that nature. So the first book was really, really good. It just was really dark and like it was a lot. So I want to read these two. Um, I just have not dove into them yet, and I don't know if I'm ready to read more about Rin, the main character, um, just because I feel like I'm not sure where there is to go from here. Like, I know that there is a plot line to follow, but as far as Rin's character development, I'm not sure what's going to happen or, like, where she could go because she's already, like, kind of at rock bottom, and, like, I feel like the only place for her to go is to be worse, and I don't know that I'm ready to read about that yet. But yeah, let me know if you've read these two and what your thoughts were. I'm going to read them eventually, I just haven't read them yet, and I did pick them up because I wanted to see what was going to happen. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on these two. And then the last two I picked up at um, the airport on the way home. So the first one is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, and I've heard so many good things about this book. She also wrote Electra, which I have not read, but... People say if you love Circe and Song of Achilles, you'll love Ariadne. Um, I started on the plane, so I'm like 80 pages in, um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. So it follows the story of Ariadne, who is the princess of Crete, and her love story with Theseus, who is a prince of Athens. So her father is the king of Crete, Minos, and her brother is the Minotaur. And so it follows, you know, the Greek ancient myth like mythology of um, the Minotaur and Theseus defeating it hopefully haven't gotten there yet spoiler <laughs> it's greek mythology so i feel like you can't really spoil it at this point point. and yeah it's just like a really interesting insight into ariadne's story um you know about her falling in love with the prince of athens and the conflict she faces because she loves her brother the minotaur um you know they people call him the minotaur but her and her mother gave him a name of asterion which means a star. So it's really interesting. It's about, you know, love and loyalty for your country and your brother and your family, um, but also needing to stick up for yourself because her father is not very kind and not very nice to her or anyone else in her family. It is a feminist story, I think, because it's about how um, the gods oftentimes punish women for the wrongdoings of men in their stories. You know, it talks about Medusa and how she was punished for a man's wrongdoings and how her mother was punished for her father's wrongdoings against Poseidon and how um, she wants to be like Medusa because her, her mother sort of shrunk into herself and faded away, but Medusa got her vengeance on the world. So yeah, super excited to finish this one and read it. I do love Greek mythology, so I think it's gonna be good regardless. And then the last one, I've heard, it's not a surprising one. I've heard everyone reading this. I just haven't picked it up. And it also, for some reason, I thought it was a YA book, but I don't think it's YA. I don't know. Let me know if you think this is YA, but it's The House in the Cerulean Sea. Um, so this story follows Linus Baker, who is a caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. And then he's summoned by the extremely upper management and given a curious and highly classified assignment to travel to an orphanage on a distant island 
and determine whether six dangerous magical children are so dangerous that they're likely to bring about the end of days. But when Linus arrives at the island, he's greeted by a series of mysterious figures, the greatest of all, which is Arthur Parnassus, the master of the orphan orphanage. And as Linus and Arthur grow closer, Linus discovers the master would do anything to keep the children safe, even if it means the world has to burn. So I'm super excited to read this. It reminds me of um, Miss Pettigrew's Home for Odd Children. I can't remember the name of that one, but that book, which I read a while ago, which I think was YA. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. I didn't realize there was a romance story in it, which is part of the reason why it intrigued me and why I decided to finally pick it up. Uh, but I've heard such amazing things about this and I have a feeling it's gonna be really good and like wholesome. So I'm excited to read it. Let me know if you've read it and if I should read it next or if I can put it off for a couple of books, but I definitely wanna read it this month. So yeah, those are all of the books that I picked up recently. I have so many more I wanna buy that are on my TBR list, but we'll see. Um, let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know especially which one you think I should read next because I, I'm i not sure. I, I like all of them, but I'm not sure which one I want to dive into next. And yeah, let me know which ones you loved, if, there, if there's any that you hated, especially the Poppy War series. I'm really on the fence about that one. So definitely, definitely let me know your thoughts on that one. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. And I will talk to you next time. <laughs> Oh,